Hey, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be turn 3A, and I'm just starting to break them up now because there's more activity. So I thought I'd give you a wide angle of the map real quick, and then we'll zoom back in where the major action took place. Basically way up in the north there, that was uh, Sedgwick coming in with his division, and Kearney failed to, to be able to activate because we got a, an end of turn activation. So anyway, you want to go over what happened over here around Seven Pines. So we'll get that set up. Uh, interesting, the, the turn ended up being a short, short turn. Um, the Confederates got off with the uh, initiative and um, tactical mistake on my part. I decided, I thought, um, I was looking at the charts and if you uh, melee, the most you can do is cause one strength point of damage and cause a retreat. But if but I looked at firing, and I could do up to two or three even, or had a chance of doing two damage. So um, Rhodes ordered uh, all of his brigades to fire at the batteries. Uh, later on, found out um, that if a if a battery takes a melee loss, one step lost they automatically are eliminated so probably should have charged the guns although they didn't get defensive fire so we didn't take any damage and then when Casey activated uh, tried to activate um, nothing happened he basically sat there he tried to issue fire orders to to pour the fire on and um, I don't know if the gunners were just uh, shocked that they were fired upon and Anyway, one got flipped over to its reduced side, so uh, Casey's uh, morale is uh, one step left in average. If he if he flips another unit or has problems, he's going to drop to poor. Uh, Couch, he got moving. Uh, he was back here around Seven Pines, if you remember. He swung up here to start securing the flank. Uh, I did learn, and I'm hoping, uh, get those guns out of there. Do not use your guns as a defensive line. So... <laughs> I don't, uh, you got to have infantry to support them, so otherwise um, that'd be a lot of uh, step losses and unit losses, and that would just break the unit. So hopefully Casey can activate and pull those guns out of the front, otherwise they're going to be gone, because I think next time he'll well charge those guns to take them. Um, the turn ended after the first activation segment with a random event, so unfortunately uh, there's Sedgwick up there. Um, he could have been at least six more hexes towards the front, so that hurts. And uh, Kearney, he failed to even get on the board. So I have those pieces there to remind me that he uh, is coming on as a reinforcement. So that would have been really nice moving down that pike to be 12 more hexes to the, to the west uh, to help Casey and Couch. Because Casey is about ready to become poor morale, which will be bad when he's in combat. There will be modifiers. That'll hurt him. D.H. Hill's uh, at full high morale because he's just been shoving everybody around at will. But um, with only one activation per turn, it slowed the attack down. So we'll see what happens. Um, actually, there isn't going to be... Um, I said I'm breaking up the turns, but there really won't be a, a second turn three because it, based on the random event, it said the turn is finished, not just the first activation. So the whole turn was done. So just to clarify, there won't be a, a uh, second part to this turn, which is good and bad for both, I guess. D.H. Hill can't push his attack on uh, Casey, but the Union reinforcements also failed to move, you know, six more hexes to the west, which they desperately need to get up there and help. So I guess it's kind of a trade-off. So thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll get to working on another turn.